Yes, we sing it. Let praise be a weapon that silences the enemy. Let praise be a weapon that conquers all anxiety. Let it rise. Let praise arise. We sing your name in the dark and it changes everything. We sing with all we are when we claim your victory. Story. I 
not done Come on, we sing Greater things are still to come Oh, I believe Come on If I'm not dead, you're not done Come on, we shout that out Greater things are still to come From death to life Cause Christ rewrote my story Come on, we say I'm justified This is my testimony This is my testimony From death to life Cause Christ rewrote I'm justified By Jesus Christ the righteous When you walk into the room, the 
vibration Our hearts are yours We want you We want you Come and consume God Oh, we are Our hearts are yours We want you We want you Can we say that again? Come and consume God Oh, we are We give you permission Our hearts are yours We want you We want you
days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and his brother John. 
and led them up on a high mountain by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. And behold, Moses and Elijah appeared to them, talking with him. Peter responded and said to Jesus, Lord, it is good that we are here. If you want, I will make three tabernacles here, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, the voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground and were terrified. And Jesus came to them and touched them and said, Get up and do not be afraid. And raising their eyes, they saw no one except Jesus himself alone. As we look at this portion of scripture, there are a few truths that we can glean. First and foremost, I want you to note that Peter, James, and John ascended with Jesus upon the mountain. And it says that only these three ascended with Jesus to the mountaintop. You know, because of the miracles that he performed, Jesus drew large crowds. He fed thousands. He healed thousands. He delivered thousands. But among that crowd, 72 were selected to be nearer. And among those 72, 12 were selected to be nearer. And among those 12, three made it to the mountaintop. When you ascend to higher places in glory, when you tread deeper waters, not everyone can go with you. Sometimes, God will bring us to seasons of divine disconnect. Because while you are ascending the mountain, trying to remove the distractions of the world, sometimes there are voices that the enemy will use, and those voices themselves don't even realize it. And so God calls to us, come higher, tread deeper, that I might show you the glory. And he was transfigured before them, and his face shone like the sun, and his garments became as white as light. Now here we see that they saw the glory of Jesus in a way that the others did not. In that moment of intimacy, in that secret place, in the place of solitude, Jesus revealed his glory by the Holy Spirit. You know, you can praise him for what he does. You can praise him for the healing. You can praise him for the deliverance, for the breakthrough, for the miracle. But you worship him for who he is. More than receiving from the hand of God, we ought to aspire to be people who touch the heart of God, people of the mountaintop. Only by the Holy Spirit can revelation come. You can clap without a revelation. You can dance without a revelation. You can sing without a revelation. You can shout without a revelation. But you cannot worship without a revelation. Because when we praise him, we praise him in response to what we see in the natural. But when we worship him, it's because we've caught a glimpse behind the veil. And only the Holy Spirit can lift that veil from the heart. This is why in moments when you're raptured in glorious worship, you're misunderstood. Because people don't understand why you respond the way you respond to the presence of Jesus. It's because you've caught a glimpse of the glory and there's nothing more beautiful. It's because you've known the sweetness of his presence, the purity, the loveliness. 
the beauty of all that he is, that is what his holiness is. He stands alone as holy. The entirety of his being, his nature, his heart, his will, his power, that's his holiness. This is why in the scripture when revelation was caught, people would fall down and cry holy. This is why in Isaiah's vision, as he saw heavenly beings flying around, they cried holy. Because when we cry holy, we've captured that glimpse of God. And worship is your being responding to God's being. And every aspect of you was designed to respond to God. And as we face him, we become reflections of that marvelous light. And as we face him, we give him glory as we see his glory. Worship is a response to revelation. Verses four through six, we see that Peter responds and says, let's build for Moses and Elijah tabernacles here. And I love the fact that no one even responds to his suggestion. While he was still speaking, he was interrupted. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud overshadowed them. And behold, a voice from the cloud said, This is my beloved son, with whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. It's good to serve. It's good to act out your faith. It's good to demonstrate your Christianity. But people of God, there are moments when all we can do is fall on our faces and cry holy. In moments like this, he's not looking for you to be a Martha. He's looking for Mary's who will sit at his feet. And finally, we see that the voice calls attention to Jesus. When you look at the face of Jesus with the eyes of your heart, Everything about this world begins to fade into the background. You begin to lose interest in the sinful pleasures of the world in which we live. Your desires begin to change. Your being begins to change. And he becomes your holy obsession for the scripture says, and raising their eyes. They saw no one except Jesus himself alone. May we too see no one except Jesus. Lift your hands, begin to bless him, church. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would show us Jesus. I have to know the story here. You said it was almost bone on bone, or it was? It's, it's bone on bone, both knees. And how long have you had that pain? It started five years ago. I was supposed to have knee surgery, and I just putting it off and just breathing, dealing with the pain. But I never really prayed for healing. <laughs> this is what Jesus does, church. Now, now come with me for a second. You gotta tell me, are you shocked or were you expecting this? I'm totally blown away. Oh, Jesus. Since she was 18 months old, her left eye was crooked. She had blurry eyes. She needed glasses to see properly. She said she felt a cold wind come over her eye and she opened up her Bible by faith to read the words. Everything was clear. And she even told her friend, is my eye straight? They said it's straight. And she said she can see clearly now. For about 19 years, she had tendonitis in her left shoulder. <laughs> she said she could not move her shoulder like that before. Come on, church, let's give Jesus a mighty hand of praise. I feel so healed. For years, I've been working, I've been on my job 24 years, and my shoulder 
I had tendonitis in my shoulder. The doctor told me that they needed to do surgery. And look. Can you say Jesus is Lord? Jesus is Lord. Can you say Jesus is my healer? Jesus is my healer. Last night, she was stuttering. How long had you dealt with that? I have been stuttering since I was 10 years old. I am so moved by this miracle. You've been stuttering since you were 10 years old. And what happened when Jesus healed you? As soon as Jesus healed me, I felt my tongue be loose. I've been stuttering for the past 13 years. The devil attacked my speech and I could no longer speak. My name is Leticia and I say that because I could never say my name. We don't need anything else. Oh, it's just you, Lord. It's just you, Lord. Just you, Lord. Oh, to see your glory. It's just you, Lord.
magnify the name of Jesus. From the depths of your spirit, sing it out, hallelujah. It's the presence of the Holy Spirit. right now that you would bring your people into encounters with the precious Holy Spirit take us to higher places church begin to right now pray out loud in your heavenly language Something is happening here, church. Begin to believe right now for your healing and your deliverance. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Let your healing virtue flow like a mighty river. only you can in the name of Jesus sickness has lost its hold in the name of Jesus every bondage is broken receive that healing right now by faith reach out eyes be healed in the name of Jesus
been broken in the name of Jesus. church that's the presence of the Holy Spirit that is the touch of his power focus on Jesus now the Holy Spirit in this moment is going to cause many of you to encounter the presence of God in a way you've never encountered him before. Expect and believe.
All we can give him is our love. All we can give him is our love. There's nothing that he requires of us that he doesn't already have. There's nothing we can do for him that he cannot perform in his own power. We were formed and fashioned, created to love him and be loved by him, to know him and be known by him. And so with our hands lifted and our eyes closed, we offer to God an offering of love. May he receive it with gladness. Take joy, my King. Take joy, my King. 